And here's another one, 3D printer. They've been used to create everything from coat hangers and instruments to cars and cups and clocks. And a number of engineers have been working to develop them as virtual chefs. This is easier to do for food that still has to be cooked afterwards, like breadsticks or ravioli, than something that's already hot and ready to eat. But a U.S. university has been experimenting with the cooking process in an effort to make 3D printed food something you can machine yourself at home. If I try to imagine what your kitchen will look like in 10 years, it might have an extra appliance that it doesn't have today, and that would be a food printer or maybe it would be a sexier name for it. But it allows you to do things you can't do today. It's easy to dismiss 3D printing food as a novelty, but at Columbia's Creative Machines Lab, they're predicting that your future kitchen may have a 3D printer. Right now, what comes out of the machines isn't cooked, so the team's trying to figure out the best way to cook food as it prints. Why do you need to incorporate lasers into 3D printing of food? So lasers offer you much higher resolution with cooking as opposed to conventional cooking methods like using an oven. Um, but a laser, it gives you that accuracy and the resolution and precision you need because now it's a pinpoint of energy that you can control where it goes. Okay, so show me how this works. So this guy is just browning the top. And it only cooks about just under a millimeter of, of dough on the top, which doesn't sound like a lot. But again, if you think about how these how this will be used on a 3D food printer, you're only laying it out about a millimeter or two of food. So you only really need to cook one to two millimeters. It's the start of turning 3D food printing into a consumer product. And are we talking about like printing like goo? A lot of people have this kind of misconception that this is sort of Frankenstein food, right? right. It's, uh, like but, something that doesn't but, seem so appetizing, but, Frankenstein But the food. ingredients that you put into a food printer are flour, water. It's kind of like, I mean, having your own chef in a way that really exactly. knows everything that your body that's, wants. Needs. That's this magical combination of having sort of a personalized chef, but also having it relatively low cost and made on the spot. I think when, he, when I talked about people about food printing, the first thing is like, oh, you know, can we bake a cake or can we make uh, you know, some carrots? It's like, sure, you could do those things, but why would you want to do that when you have a machine that can pretty much make any combination of flavors? Right, something know, so much better than, than exactly. just like plain carrots. 